Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Miller Hemingway was an American novelist, short story writer, and journalist. His economical and understated style had a strong influence on 20th century fiction. While his life of adventure and his public image influenced later generations, Hemingway produced most of his work between the mid-1920s and the mid-1950s, and won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954. He published seven novels, six short story collections, and two non-fiction works. Additional works, including three novels, four short story collections, and three non-fiction works were published posthumously. Many of his works are considered classics of American literature. Hemingway was raised in Oak Park, Illinois. After high school, he reported for a few months for the Kansas City Star, before leaving for the Italian front to enlist with the World War I ambulance drivers. In 1918, he was seriously wounded and returned home. His wartime experiences formed the basis for his novel A Farewell to Arms. In 1921, he married Hadley Richardson, the first of his four wives. The couple moved to Paris, where he worked as a foreign correspondent and fell under the influence of the modernist writers and artists of the 1920s, lost generation, expatriate community. He published his debut novel, The Sun Also Rises, in 1926. After his 1927 divorce from Richardson, Hemingway married Pauline Pfeiffer. They divorced after he returned from the Spanish Civil War, where he had been a journalist, and after which he wrote For Whom the Bell Tolls. Martha Gellhorn became his third wife in 1940. They separated when he met Mary Welch in London. During World War II, he was present at the Normandy landings and the liberation of Paris. Shortly after the publication of The Old Man and the Sea, Hemingway went on safari to Africa, where he was almost killed in two successive plane crashes that left him in pain or ill health. For much of his remaining life, Hemingway maintained permanent residences in Key West, Florida, and Cuba, and in 1959, he bought a house in Ketchum, Idaho, where he killed himself in mid-1961. Early Life Ernest Miller Hemingway was born on July 21, 1899, in Oak Park, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. His father, Clarence Edmonds Hemingway, was a physician, and his mother, Grace Hall Hemingway, was a musician. Both were well-educated and well-respected in Oak Park, a conservative community about which resident Frank Lloyd Wright said, so many churches for so many good people to go to. For a short period after their marriage, Clarence and Grace Hemingway lived at first with Grace's father, Ernest Hall, their first son's namesake. Later, Ernest Hemingway would say that he disliked his name, which he associated with the naive, even foolish hero of Oscar Wilde's play The Importance of Being Ernest. The family eventually moved into a seven-bedroom home in a respectable neighborhood, with a music studio for Grace and a medical office for Clarence. Hemingway's mother frequently performed in concerts around the village. As an adult, Hemingway professed to hate his mother, although biographer Michael S. Reynolds points out that Hemingway mirrored her energy and enthusiasm, her insistence that he learn to play the cello became a source of conflict, but he later admitted the music lessons were useful to his writing, as is evident in the contrapuntal structure of For Whom the Bell Tolls. The family spent summers at Windermere on Walloon Lake, near Petoskey, Michigan. Hemingway's father taught him to hunt, fish, and camp in the woods and lakes of northern Michigan as a young boy early experiences in nature that instilled a passion for outdoor adventure and living in remote 
or isolated areas. From 1913 until 1917, Hemingway attended Oak Park and River Forest High School. He took part in a number of sports, boxing, track and field, water polo, and football. He excelled in English classes, and with his sister Marcellini, performed in the school orchestra for two years. During his junior year he had a journalism class, structured as though the classroom were a newspaper office, with better writers submitting pieces to the school newspaper, The Trapeze. Hemingway and Marcellini both had pieces submitted. Hemingway's first piece, published in January 1916, was about a local performance by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. He edited the trapeze and the tabula, imitating the language of sports writers, taking the pen name Ring Lardner, Jr., a nod to Ring Lardner of the Chicago Tribune whose byline was, Linotype, like Mark Twain. Stephen Crane, Theodore Dreiser and Sinclair Lewis. Hemingway was a journalist before becoming a novelist. After leaving high school, he went to work for the Kansas City Star as a cub reporter. Although he stayed there for only six months, he relied on the Star's style guide as a foundation for his writing, used short sentences, used short first paragraphs, used vigorous English. Be positive, not negative. World War I Early in 1918, Hemingway responded to a Red Cross recruitment effort in Kansas City and signed on to become an ambulance driver in Italy. He left New York in May and arrived in Paris as the city was under bombardment from German artillery. By June, he was at the Italian front. It was probably around this time that he first met John Dos Passos, with whom he had a rocky relationship for decades. On his first day in Milan, he was sent to the scene of a munitions factory explosion, where rescuers retrieved the shredded remains of female workers. He described the incident in his non-fiction book Death in the Afternoon. I remember that after we searched quite thoroughly for the complete dead we collected fragments. A few days later, he was stationed at Fossalta di Piave. On July 8, he was seriously wounded by mortar fire, having just returned from the canteen bringing chocolate and cigarettes for the men at the front line. Despite his wounds, Hemingway assisted Italian soldiers to safety for which he received the Italian Silver Medal of Bravery. Still only 18, Hemingway said of the incident, When you go to war as a boy you have a great illusion of immortality. Other people get killed, not you. Then when you are badly wounded the first time you lose that illusion and you know it can happen to you. He sustained severe shrapnel wounds to both legs, underwent an immediate operation at a distribution center, and spent five days at a field hospital before he was transferred for recuperation to the Red Cross Hospital in Milan. He spent six months at the hospital, where he met and formed a strong friendship with Chink, Dorman, Smith that lasted for decades, and shared a room with future American Foreign Service officer, ambassador, and author Henry Serrano Villard. While recuperating, he fell in love for the first time with Agnes von Karofsky, a Red Cross nurse seven years his senior by the time of his release, and returned to the United States in January 1919. Agnes and Hemingway had decided to marry within a few months in America. However, in March, she wrote that she had become engaged to an Italian officer. Biographer Jeffrey Myers states in his book Hemingway, a biography that Hemingway was devastated by Agnes' rejection, and in future relationships, he followed a pattern of abandoning a wife before she abandoned him. Toronto and Chicago Hemingway returned home early in 1919 to a time of readjustment 
not yet 20 years old. He had gained from the war a maturity that was at odds with living at home without a job and with the need for recuperation. As Reynolds explains, Hemingway could not really tell his parents what he thought when he saw his bloody knee. He could not say how scared he was in another country, with surgeons who could not tell him in English if his leg was coming off or not. In September, he took a fishing and camping trip with high school friends to the back country of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The trip became the inspiration for his short story, Big Two-Hearted River, in which the semi-autobiographical character Nick Adams takes to the country to find solitude after returning from war. A family friend offered him a job in Toronto, and, with nothing else to do, he accepted. Late that year he began as a freelancer, staff writer, and foreign correspondent for the Toronto Star Weekly. He returned to Michigan the following June, and then moved to Chicago in September 1920 to live with friends, while still filing stories for the Toronto Star. In Chicago, he worked as an associate editor of the monthly journal Cooperative Commonwealth, where he met novelist Sherwood Anderson. When St. Louis native Hadley Richardson came to Chicago to visit the sister of Hemingway's roommate, Hemingway became infatuated and later claimed, I knew she was the girl I was going to marry. Hadley, red-haired, with a nurturing instinct, was eight years older than Hemingway. Despite being older than Hemingway, Hadley, who had grown up, with an overprotective mother, seemed less mature than usual for a young woman her age. Bernice Kurt, author of The Hemingway Women, claims Hadley was evocative of Agnes, but that Hadley had a childishness that Agnes lacked. The two corresponded for a few months, and then decided to marry and travel to Europe. They wanted to visit Rome. But Sherwood Anderson convinced them to visit Paris instead, writing letters of introduction for the young couple. They were married on September 3, 1921. Two months later, Hemingway was hired as foreign correspondent for the Toronto Star, and the couple left for Paris. Of Hemingway's marriage to Hadley, Myers claims with Hadley. Hemingway achieved everything he had hoped for with Agnes, the love of a beautiful woman, a comfortable income, a life in Europe, Paris. Carlos Baker, Hemingway's first biographer, believes that while Anderson suggested Paris, because the monetary exchange rate made it an inexpensive place to live, more importantly it was where the most interesting people in the world lived in Paris. Hemingway met writers such as Gertrude Stein, James Joyce, and Ezra Pound who could help a young writer up the rungs of a career. The Hemingway of the early Paris years was a tall, handsome, muscular, broad-shouldered, brown-eyed, rosy-cheeked, square-jawed, soft-voiced young man. He and Hadley lived in a small walk-up at 74 Rue du Cardinal Lemoine in the Latin Quarter, and he worked in a rented room in a nearby building. Stein, who was the bastion of modernism in Paris, became Hemingway's mentor and godmother to his son Jack. She introduced him to the expatriate artists and writers of the Montparnasse Quarter, whom she referred to as the Lost Generation, a term Hemingway popularized with the publication of The Sun Also Rises, a regular at Stein's Salon. Hemingway met influential painters such as Pablo Picasso, Joan Miro, and Juan Gris. He eventually withdrew from Stein's influence, and the relationship deteriorated into a literary quarrel that spanned decades. The American poet Ezra Pound met Hemingway by chance at Sylvia Beach's bookshop Shakespeare and company in 1922. The two toured Italy in 1923 and lived on the same street in 1924. They forged a strong friendship, and in Hemingway, Pound recognized and fostered a young talent. 
Pound introduced Hemingway to the Irish writer James Joyce, with whom Hemingway frequently embarked on alcoholic sprees. During his first 20 months in Paris, Hemingway filed 88 stories for the Toronto Star newspaper. He covered the Greco-Turkish War, where he witnessed the burning of Smyrna, and wrote travel pieces such as tuna fishing in Spain and trout fishing all across Europe. Spain has the best then Germany. Hemingway was devastated on learning that Hadley had lost a suitcase filled with his manuscripts at the Gare de Lyon as she was traveling to Geneva to meet him in December 1922. The following September, the couple returned to Toronto, where their son John Hadley Nicanor was born on October 10, 1923. During their absence, Hemingway's first book, Three Stories and Ten Poems, was published. Two of the stories it contained were all that remained after the loss of the suitcase and the third had been written in early the previous year in Italy. Within months a second volume, In Our Time, was published. The small volume included six vignettes and a dozen stories Hemingway had written the previous summer during his first visit to Spain, where he discovered the thrill of the corridor. He missed Paris, considered Toronto boring and wanted to return to the life of a writer, rather than live the life of a journalist. Hemingway, Hadley and their son returned to Paris in January 1924, and moved into a new apartment on the Rue Notre Dame des Champs. Hemingway helped Ford Maddox Ford edit the Transatlantic Review, which published works by Pound. John Dos Passos, Baroness Elsa von Freytag Loringhoven, and Stein as well as some of Hemingway's own early stories such as Indian Camp. When In Our Time was published in 1925, the dust jacket bore comments from Ford. Indian Camp received considerable praise. Ford saw it as an important early story by a young writer, and critics in the United States praised Hemingway for reinvigorating the short story genre with his crisp style and use of declarative sentences. Six months earlier, Hemingway had met F. Scott Fitzgerald, and the pair formed a friendship of admiration and hostility. Fitzgerald had published The Great Gatsby the same year, Hemingway read it, liked it, and decided his next work had to be a novel, with his wife Hadley. Hemingway first visited the Festival of San Fermin in Pamplona, Spain, in 1923, where he became fascinated by bullfighting. It is at this time that he began to be referred to as Papa. The Hemingways returned to Pamplona in 1924 and a third time in June 1925. That year they brought with them a group of American and British expatriates, Hemingway's Michigan boyhood friend Bill Smith, Donald Ogden Stewart, Lady Duff Twaisden, her lover Pat Guthrie, and Harold Loeb. A few days after the fiesta ended, on his birthday, he began to write the draft of what would become The Sun Also Rises. Finishing eight weeks later, a few months later, in December 1925, the Hemingways left to spend the winter in Schrunz, Austria, where Hemingway began revising the manuscript extensively. Pauline Pfeiffer joined them in January, and against Hadley's advice, urged Hemingway to sign a contract with Scribner's. He left Austria for a quick trip to New York to meet with the publishers, and on his return, during a stop in Paris, began an affair with Pfeiffer, before returning to Schrunz to finish the revisions in March. The manuscript arrived in New York in April. He corrected the final proof in Paris in August 1926, and Scribner's published the novel in October. The Sun Also Rises epitomized the post-war expatriate generation, received good reviews, and is recognized as Hemingway's greatest work. Hemingway himself later wrote, to his editor Max Perkins that the point of the book 
was not so much about a generation being lost, but that the earth abideth forever. He believed the characters in The Sun Also Rises may have been batted, but were not lost. Hemingway's marriage to Hadley deteriorated as he was working on The Sun Also Rises. In early 1926, Hadley became more aware of his affair with Pfeiffer, who came to Pamplona with him that July. On the return to Paris, Hadley asked for a separation. In November she formally requested a divorce. They split their possessions while Hadley accepted Hemingway's offer of the proceeds. From the sun also rises. The couple were divorced in January 1927, and Hemingway married Pfeiffer in May. Pfeiffer, who was from a wealthy Catholic Arkansas family, had moved to Paris to work for Vogue magazine. Before their marriage, Hemingway converted to Catholicism. They honeymooned in Le Grau du Roi, where he contracted anthrax, and he planned his next collection of short stories, Men Without Women, which was published in October 1927, and included his boxing story, Fifty Grand. Cosmopolitan magazine editor-in-chief Ray Long praised Fifty Grand, calling it one of the best short stories that ever came to my hands. The best prize fight story I ever read, a remarkable piece of realism. By the end of the year Pauline, who was pregnant, wanted to move back to America. John Dos Passos recommended Key West, and they left Paris in March 1928. Hemingway suffered a severe injury in their Paris bathroom, when he pulled a skylight down on his head thinking he was pulling on a toilet chain. This left him with a prominent forehead scar, which he carried for the rest of his life. When Hemingway was asked about the scar, he was reluctant to answer. After his departure from Paris, Hemingway never again lived in a big city. Key West and the Caribbean Hemingway and Pauline traveled to Kansas City, where their son Patrick was born on June 28, 1928. Pauline had a difficult delivery, which Hemingway fictionalized in A Farewell to Arms. After Patrick's birth, Pauline and Hemingway traveled to Wyoming, Massachusetts, and New York. In the winter, he was in New York with Bumby, about to board a train to Florida, when he received a cable telling him that his father had killed himself. Hemingway was devastated, having earlier written to his father telling him not to worry about financial difficulties. The letter arrived minutes after the suicide. He realized how Hadley must have felt after her own father's suicide in 1903, and he commented, I'll probably go the same way. Upon his return to Key West in December, Hemingway worked on the draft of A Farewell to Arms before leaving for France in January. He had finished it in August but delayed the revision. The serialization in Scribner's magazine was scheduled to begin in May, but as late as April. Hemingway was still working on the ending, which he may have rewritten as many as 17 times. The completed novel was published on September 27. Biographer James Mello believes A Farewell to Arms established Hemingway's stature as a major American writer and displayed a level of complexity not apparent in The Sun Also Rises. In Spain in mid-1929, Hemingway researched his next work, Death in the Afternoon. He wanted to write a comprehensive treatise on bullfighting, explaining the toreros and corridors complete, with glossaries and appendices, because he believed bullfighting was of great tragic interest, being literally of life and death. During the early 1930s, Hemingway spent his winters in Key West and summers in Wyoming, where he found the most beautiful country he had seen in the American Western hunted jare, elk, and grizzly bear. He was joined there by Dos Passos and in November 1930, after bringing Dos Passos 
to the train station in Billings, Montana, Hemingway broke his arm in a car accident. The surgeon tended the compound spiral fracture and bound the bone with kangaroo tendon. Hemingway was hospitalized for seven weeks, with Pauline tending to him. The nerves in his writing hand took as long as a year to heal, during which time he suffered intense pain. His third son, Gregory Hancock Hemingway, was born a year later on November 12, 1931, in Kansas City. Pauline's uncle bought the couple a house in Key West with a carriage house, the second floor of which was converted into a writing studio. Its location across the street from the lighthouse made it easy for Hemingway to find after a long night of drinking. While in Key West, Hemingway frequented the local bar, Sloppy Joe's. He invited friends, including Waldo Pierce, Dos Passos, and Max Perkins, to join him on fishing trips and on an all-male expedition to the Dry Tortugas. Meanwhile, he continued to travel to Europe and to Cuba, and, although in 1933 he wrote of Key West, we have a fine house here. In Kids Are All Well, Mello believes he was plainly restless. In 1933, Hemingway and Pauline went on safari to East Africa. The ten-week trip provided material for Green Hills of Africa, as well as for the short stories, The Snows of Kilimanjaro and the short happy life of Francis Macomba. The couple visited Mombasa, Nairobi, and Machakos in Kenya, then moved on to Tanganyika Territory, where they hunted in the Serengeti, around Lake Maniera, and west and southeast of present-day Tarangiri National Park. Their guide was the noted white hunter, Philip Percival, who had guided Theodore Roosevelt on his 1909 safari. During these travels, Hemingway contracted amoebic dysentery that caused a prolapsed intestine, and he was evacuated by plane to Nairobi, an experience reflected in the snows of Kilimanjaro. On Hemingway's return to Key West in early 1934, he began work on Green Hills of Africa, which he published in 1935. To mixed reviews, Hemingway bought a boat in 1934, named it the Pilar, and began sailing the Caribbean. In 1935 he first arrived at Bimini, where he spent a considerable amount of time. During this period he also worked on To Have and Have Not, published in 1937 while he was in Spain, the only novel he wrote during the 1930s. Spanish Civil War. In 1937, Hemingway agreed to report on the Spanish Civil War for the North American Newspaper Alliance, arriving in Spain in March, with Dutch filmmaker Joris Ivans. Ivans, who was filming The Spanish Earth, wanted Hemingway to replace John Dos Passos as screenwriter, since Dos Passos had left the project when his friend Jose Robles was arrested and later executed. The incident changed Dos Passos' opinion of the leftist Republicans, creating a rift between him and Hemingway, who later spread a rumor that Dos Passos left Spain out of cowardice. Journalist and writer Martha Gellhorn, whom Hemingway had met in Key West the previous Christmas, joined him in Spain. Like Hadley, Martha was a St. Louis native, and like Pauline, she had worked for Vogue in Paris. Of Martha, Kurt explains, she never catered to him the way other women did. Late in 1937, while in Madrid with Martha, Hemingway wrote his only play, The Fifth Column. As the city was being bombarded, he returned to Key West for a few months, then back to Spain twice in 1938, where he was present at the Battle of the Ebro, the last Republican stand, and he was among the British and American journalists who were some of the last to leave the battle as they crossed the river. Cuba 
In early 1939, Hemingway crossed to Cuba in his boat to live in the Hotel Ambos Mendoz in Havana. This was the separation phase of a slow and painful split from Pauline, which had begun when Hemingway met Martha Gellhorn. Martha soon joined him in Cuba, and they almost immediately rented Finca Vigia, a property from Havana. Pauline and the children left Hemingway that summer, after the family was reunited during a visit to Wyoming, and when Hemingway's divorce from Pauline was finalized, he and Martha were married on November 20, 1940, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, as he had after his divorce. From Hadley, he changed locations, moving his primary summer residence to Ketchum, Idaho just outside the newly built resort of Sun Valley, and his winter residence to Cuba. Hemingway, who had been disgusted when a Parisian friend allowed his cats to eat from the table, became enamored of cats in Cuba, keeping dozens of them on the property. Gellhorn inspired him to write his most famous novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls, which he started in March 1939 and finished in July 1940. It was published in October 1940. Consistent with his pattern of moving around while working on a manuscript, he wrote For Whom the Bell Tolls in Cuba, Wyoming, and Sun Valley. For Whom the Bell Tolls became a book of the month club choice, sold half a million copies within months, was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize and as Myers describes it, triumphantly re-established Hemingway's literary reputation. In January 1941, Martha was sent to China on assignment for Collier's magazine. Hemingway went with her, sending in dispatches for the newspaper, PM, but in general he disliked China. A 2009 book suggests during that period he may have been recruited to work for Soviet intelligence agents under the name of Agent Argo. They returned to Cuba before the declaration of war by the United States that December, when he convinced the Cuban government to help him refit the Pilar, which he intended to use to ambush German submarines off the coast of Cuba. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.